Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Diaspora Log. Thank you very much for the love that you keep showing us on the social media platforms, here on YouTube. The love is tremendous and we appreciate it. It's not going unnoticed. Please can you continue commenting and telling us what material you want us to cover in the future. So today I want to apologize in advance for the topic that we're going to cover today because it's about dealing with loss and grief, something that is not really talked about, but I feel it's very important for us to talk about it because it's something that's hard for individuals regardless of where you live, especially for us who live out here in a diaspora where we don't really have the family support systems. So we want to talk about the five main points that you need to consider when dealing with grief. The first point is each person has their own way of dealing with death and loss. It's very important to to you know co to be cognizant of that because we are unique individuals. So some people would take longer to deal with you know with a death or a loss of whatever, and some people are going to take a shorter period of time. Some people want to be by themselves. Some people want to be around people. Some people want to talk about it, and some people really don't want to talk about it. It depends with you know aptitude, how we was raised, and 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 a whole lot of things. You know they come into that whole mix. So it's important to know that we all deal with it differently. Point number two is grief is a process. This is not something that just, you know, come around and then it disappears after a period of time. This is an ongoing process. And if you do a lot of reading and if you go on the internet or if you go in the library and do a lot of reading, you're going to find out that there's a lot of theories around it and there's a lot of books around it. There's people like Silverman and Class, uh, Kubler-Ross and, and a lot more. And I guess the most important um, the theory that's talked about is the five stages of dealing with grief by Kubler-Ross where she talks about um, denial being the first stage. So the denial stage might be that initial shock that you get when you hear that you know somebody you love has passed away so that's that no no feeling you don't really actually believe that it could have happened you know you don't believe that this is happening um you know so some people might not even cry people around you could be crying and you just in shock and you just like you can't believe it you know that's the first stage in actual fact she described that as your mind trying to protect you from the pain then the next stage from that is the anger stage so this is where you might start to feel angry and hostile. So asking a lot of questions like, why did it happen? Why did it happen to them? Why wasn't I, why wasn't I around? Why did it happen to me? You know, why did I have to lose somebody that I, uh, you know, that I love? And actually, that might make somebody overindulge in alcohol or drugs, just trying to deal with that, with that anger and those questions. Like, you know, I'm not. I'm not it, ever going to be able to spend time with that person and um, from that stage you go to the bargaining stage and you, before we move over to the bargaining stage when somebody going through that anger process you really need to support them because you know it's not something that you can you know click click your fingers and you know hop out, out, out from so we need to be aware of that uh, so the bargaining stage this is when you start coming to terms with not actually having that person around, you actually start to process the new reality like, oh, damn, okay, I'm not going to see him again. This is really what it is. And um, it might actually lead to you be being depressed when you're going through that. You know, when somebody going through that depression stage because you feel cheated, that loneliness can start creeping in and you feel like don't nobody really understand the pain you're going through. It's a very difficult time. And um, from that, Kubler-Ross then says the next stage that comes along is the acceptance stage. This is when you slowly accept the loss. This does not mean that, you know, you are totally healed. And she says that it's very important for people to notice that these stages don't actually happen in that order. Some people may skip a stage and just, for example, just go into the bargaining stage. Or some people might start from the depression stage or, you know, and the the time limits is different, you know what I mean? It's different for each individual. But then when you go through that accept acceptance stage, this is when you start feeling like, okay, this is going to be the, the new normality, right? So those are the stages of, of, of the grieving process. And um, okay, so point number three is we need to recognize the link between mind and body, right? So neglecting your daily routines can affect your mental health. Uh, we need to be aware of that because what happens a lot of the times if you notice somebody that's going through the grieving process They might not be 
stop, you know, they might stop having regular meals like they would normally do. Showering, sleeping, you know, the sleeping patterns could be, you know, all over the place. And um, they, might, they might start neglecting personal hygiene. You know, instead of like really making a mockery out of the situation or, you know, thinking that there's something wrong with that person, we need to bear with them and actually support them. This is when you need people around you to kind of like help you do those things. Somebody to make that meal, somebody to, you know, bring you a glass of water. So we need to recognize the link between the mind and body that if the body ain't right, sometimes it affects your mental health. And that's when some people may say, oh, when you was going through that situation, it felt like you lost it, you know, like you were losing it and stuff because that's the process that people go to and the next one which is point number four sounds so obvious but in, in certain certain situations not so obvious you need to talk to somebody you know just talking to somebody really helps you know it could be a loved one it could be a friend it could be a professional and I guess this is when it starts to get complex for people who live in the diaspora depending on how you know um, your connections with others and your support systems are because sometimes we all know we live in a society where when you speak to somebody people might view it as as you being weak you know what I mean and we live in a society that is so hype on gossip you know what I mean? So when you tell people what you're going through, some people might go, oh, they might put it on social media, or they might go tell so-and-so, they might tell that person, it might affect my job, whatever the situation is. So we might think it's easy, but it's not so easy to talk to people based on that. Now, the last point we want to talk about is dispelling the uh, myths that we have. There's a lot of myths that are you know surrounded around you know this whole process of grieving so people just say well just be strong which is another myth people just say you know it's a lot of you know innocuous comments that people drop here and there you know like you know it's gonna last a year and then after that you're gonna be all right don't worry about it don't talk to somebody just you know just sit back and pray about it and you're gonna be okay which is it's, it's, it's good to pray about it, but you know, you need more, you know, people need more. And uh, some people might view moving on, for example, as you've not grieved properly, like why, why are they moving on? You know, does that mean that they're not sorry? Even things like, you know, culturally crying. Some people may not cry, or some people may cry in private. You might not see them crying in public and people just assume that, you know, they're not sorry about the loss or anything that's happening. So sometimes we need to dispel the myths that we have about, you know, the grieving process. And um, the grieving process does not only apply to death, it applies to loss of a marriage or a relationship, for example, loss of a job, a business deal. You know, it's a process that you need to go through for you to have that healing process. And I thought it was very important for me to cover that because as a people, as a community, we don't sometimes go through the healing process and you know it may affect our relationships and our business and things that we you, you know we do in the future so it's very very important that we deal with this and it's very important to know that you might be dealing with it it takes a long time for you to deal with it so you might be okay for a year and then after two years something might pop up it could be a picture it could be speech it could be like a thought that might spark you to hop back into a you know into the into the denial process, the anger process or whatever. So it's an ongoing process. And um, yeah, that's what I wanted to talk to you guys about. And um, if you look on episode six that I did with uh, with Prince, he talks about insurance and you know, some of the things that you might wanna, you know, take use um, and plan as far as insurance policies and funeral policies. He, we go into detail in, in that episode. But as far as this, this has been the video. Thank you for the love again. Keep watching and thanks for the love family.